Hi everyone, so this is chapter 11 and the entire focus of this chapter is on presentation aids. So moving on to our next slide. What we will cover in this chapter, and I'm gonna to try to get the entire screen here so that you can see everything, is today we will focus on the function of presentation aids, the varieties of different types of presentation aids, presentation guidelines, tips for presenting your aids, tips for using your slides. I'll talk specifically about how to design an actual PowerPoint slide and then what to do if technology fails you. So there's a lot to cover and for your next speech, you are required to incorporate a PowerPoint slideshow into your speech. It's very important that you don't just have it in the background because you are fulfilling a requirement but rather that you fully integrate each slide into your speech for a more dynamic, interesting presentation. So there are different functions of presentation aids. Number one, they assist with thinking because as you will learn in our very last slide, we can process information so much more rapidly when we see a picture as opposed to just when we see text. And it also increases our retention of material if we hear it, if we see a visual, and also if we see text. So we increase the chances that people will be able to remember what you've said, also understand what you said, and then remember what you said threefold. It encourages retention, like I just said. It excites multiple senses. So when you incorporate a visual aid, you are engaging left brain, which is the verbal delivery of your speech, that analytical mind, so people are listening to what you're saying. You're also engaging the right brain, that's that visual imagination, and that element, the two combine, when I talk about public speaking, it's combining left brain and right, right brain, the two combine really help to excite the senses, to help make your speech more interesting for people and also to help them understand and help them remember what you said. It does create interest and it can really simplify complex ideas. So think about it if you were in a, an intro biology class and you're learning about the cycle of life or you're learning about the cycle of life for a, a, a frog. It's really, really helpful if you actually see the cycle step by step or stage by stage. So that helps you to really be able to process and simplify some complex ideas and information. Let's go back here. Previous. Okay, so moving on, using your presentations as evidence, you wanna make sure that even though you have your PowerPoint slideshow for your informative speech, or even if it's something else, let's say you're going into business and you have a sales pitch, or let's say you're a nurse and you need to explain something to a patient and you actually have to draw something, or if you are give, you're an elementary school teacher and you're giving a lecture to a group of 10-year-olds, you want to use your presentation as a form of evidence. However, you do not want it to be the focus of your speech, so you don't want it to be so amazing that it completely outdoes you as a speaker and then really kind of outshines the message of your speech so that that's lost. So you, you don't want it to be so dynamic that it becomes the absolute focus of your speech. So that's number one. Number two, when you're using presentation aids as evidence, you wanna make sure that it corroborates what you're talking about so that it actually reinforces the message that you are delivering. So if you have main idea, and you're talking, let's say you're talking about problem solution, the problem of parking on college university campuses, and then the solution. So you might show an example of a video during high traffic time at a university at FSU, for example, where you have people that are literally vying to get a parking spot because there just are not enough parking spots. So if you showed a video during that high traffic time, that presentation aid will corroborate what you're talking about and will serve as evidence. And you wanna make sure, like I said before, that it's secondary to the speech. It's not the focus of your speech, but that it enhances your message. It isn't the message. So I don't know if you hear my dogs, but my dogs are barking. Okay, so there are different types of presentation aids. The first is a prop. 
So the first is a prop. So if you look over here and you'll see a picture and let's say this individual was giving a speech about bike safety and she talks about the importance of a helmet. So she brings a helmet in to class so that she can show her audience how to wear a helmet. So this is an example of a prop and it's just a physical object. It's an actual thing. Some of the considerations that you want to think about are, will my audience be able to see it? So will my audience be able to see it? So let's say if you were for your introductory speech, you talked about basketball as being an important part of who you are, you might show that object. You might actually show the basketball. And then that will help your audience to remember, oh, this person really enjoys or has, has a, a deep love for basketball. And then you bring that basketball in and that helps to reinforce your message. So props are one type of visual aid. Another type is a picture. So with a picture, you wanna ask yourself, well, what is it? So there are different types of pictures. You could use photos, you could use illustrations, you could use diagrams, you could use maps. If for your informative speech, you're talking so if your informative speech is about World War II, you might show a map before World War II and then after World War II, and there will be some differences in the territory, and then who took control over the East and who took control over the West. So that would be an example as to how a picture, a specific type of picture, a map could corroborate and also enhance your message. Another consideration for this one is, will your audience be able to see it? So ask yourself that question. And if you were in a regular classroom and you just had a picture, so just a regular five by eight picture or five by seven picture, and you just held it up for your audience to see, one consideration will be, can my audience see that in a classroom? And the answer is no, they won't be able to see it. Maybe the first two rows will be able to see it, but the other rows won't be able to see it. So what you would do then is then take that picture and maybe put it in an Elmo, so or under an Elmo so that people can actually see it and it's displayed on the projector on a screen, or you might actually put it into a PowerPoint slide so that you can enlarge it so that everyone can see it. So you always wanna consider, will my audience be able to see this picture? Now, another type of Another type of aid that you can use visual aid is, is data and statistical information. You can use tables to explain things for your audience. You can use different types of graphs. There are flow charts, there are pie charts, there are organizational charts. There are line graphs and bar graphs to display statistical information. Oftentimes these graphs can help people to conceptualize what you're talking about, to make comparisons to see changes in trends over time. So you might use a line graph to talk about changes in, in trends over time. I know for COVID-19, you will often see line graphs to show the rate of, um, the rate of, so for COVID-19, you might choose to use a the rate of a line graph to show the rate of infection over time. So you might have this graph and it talks about, in the graph, it will display from February to June or February to July. So you would use that line graph to show changes in trends over time. And you can also use charts. So if looking at this, we have a flow chart. And if you were a plumber and you wanted to give a lecture to apprentices, and to explain to them what to do just in case the toilet doesn't flush, this flowchart is a nice, effective way to help people remember what you said, to create some interest, and then to excite multiple senses, again, so that they remember what you said. This is an example of a pie chart and how you might use a pie chart if you're talking about different types of groups or and you want to get like a full percentage about something and you can break it down. So if you have a full 100%, and you wanna break items or categories down, pie charts can be quite effective for doing that. This is an example of an organizational chart. At any institution, they will have an organizational chart. So who is at the very top? 
and then the different layers and layers within that particular organization. So if even at SCF, if you were to look in our handbook, you would see this organizational chart and it would show you who's at the top, who's right below them, who's at the middle level, and then so on and so forth. Or if you had a complaint, you would look at that flow chart and then you would see, who do I go to? Who is this person's supervisor? You would go to that person. You wouldn't go all the way to the top. You would go to the person that you would like to make a complaint about. You would go to their supervisor. So you'd want to make sure that you use an organizational chart to best understand the action that you need to take. Now, multimedia, so audio, video, and then these things that are displayed via digital devices. So audio can be quite effective for use as a presentation aid, but there are some things that you wanna take into consideration when using audio. You wanna make sure that you think about how long the audio is, because people, when they're listening to something, they tune out very quickly if there is no visual element to the audio. So if you are, including an audio clip, make sure that you keep it under 30 seconds. The same is true for a video clip, especially for a speech that's eight to 10 minutes, really no longer than 45 seconds. Try to keep it under 30 seconds if you can, but you can incorporate an audio clip and you can incorporate video again to enhance your presentation, corroborate your message. And then you can display these things via digital devices. So you might be able to take your PowerPoint presentation and then plug it, your computer into your television. And then as you're presenting, you can display that PowerPoint through your TV. So there's a lot of different ways to display our multimedia in our presentations. So for preparation and presentation guidelines, what do we know? So we again want to say that we don't want to make them the focus of our speech. But as with anything, there is always an exception to the rule. Number one, when you would make it the focus of your speech, let's say if you're in business or in sales and you want to introduce a product, then that would be the focus of your visual aid would be the focus of your presentation. Number two, there's interactive pieces. Let's say you are an engineering student and you are learning about a particular object that you're supposed to design and your professor really has to focus on this object to explain the different parts of this object and how to, how to design these parts. So there's some really interactive pieces there and then that object is going to be the focus of your presentation. So no matter what though, you wanna make sure that the presentation aid supports your speech, that it is relevant to your speech. And I do have some tips. So your textbook has some tips for creating these aids. Include key information only, avoid clutter. So you don't want too much. So there is, there is such a thing as, as too much of a good thing. So you want to avoid clutter. You want to make sure that it's visible for your audience to see. And in this, in this class, it may not be as challenging because you are at home and your audience is pretty close to you so that they can see your visual aids. But if you were in a larger classroom or you were in an auditorium, you really wanna make sure that your audience is going to be able to see your, your visual aids. So you wanna make sure that you consider that when creating your visual aid and when using, when selecting a visual aid to use. And you wanna make sure that you keep, keep the text easy to read. So you don't wanna have long, complicated sentences. You wanna just have short phrases, simple words, so that your audience can more easily read something in your slideshow. So here's an example of a, a difference in a visual aid that is easier to read and one that's harder to read. So if you look over here, and I'm sorry if my head is in the way, let's move that down there. So over here on the left in this slide, it's a little bit harder for your audience to read. You can't really see it because you're trying to get everything in there. So maybe what would be a better idea is that you have, instead of just having one and trying to fit them all in, you might have just one slide per plant. So hard to kill house plants, so we have the moth orchid. Just include one house plant per slide. Then your next slide, you might include the long leaf fig. And then the next slide, you might include the next one. So you wanna keep your aid very simple and you wanna ask yourself, is my audience going to be able to see it? 
Another example is when you're selecting a font, you want to make sure that, let's see if I can move back here. Moving back. Okay, so when you're selecting a font, I can't get it all in here, but you want to make sure nothing is too, too playful, and that's, that's a pun because this is a little bit playful here for the visual image. You want to make sure that it's consistent with the tone or the mood, and you want to make sure that you're using a limited number of fonts. You don't want to have totally different fonts for every single slide. So remember that the general rule of thumb here is to just be consistent. You could use one font for the title of your slide, but you want to make sure that if you use one font for the title of your slide, that you'll use the same font for the next slide title. And then the content within the actual slide might be a different font from your title, and that is okay. But again, just make sure that it's consistent on each slide. And you want the color variations not to be too different. So these are all things that you want to take into consideration. Okay, so moving on here, when using a color, you want to make sure that you create visual stimulation, but you want to be aware of color vision deficiency. So for people that are colorblind, I believe that it's red and green uh, cannot be red. So you want to make sure that you stay away from text that is red or text that is green. You can use background red and green, but the text itself. So just looking, I know you can't see the full C here and the full W, but I'm just using this slide as to, to illustrate how you can use color because this is effective and this is just too much. You can't really read this. We've got green text here, which we're not supposed to have green text. And we've got this blue kind of overlay and it's just much more difficult to see and much more difficult to read for your audience. So make sure that you ask yourself, is this visually stimulating? Is it too stimulating? Did I follow the rule of color contrast? So do I have a dark background with light colored text? Or do I have a light background with light colored text? Follow the rule of color contrast where if you have a dark background, then you have light colored text or vice versa. So keep that in mind when you're designing your slides. So some other tips for presenting your aids is do not turn your back to the audience. Sometimes when we are inexperienced and you create a PowerPoint slideshow, your, your gut reaction is to just turn your back to the audience and to read to them, and you want to avoid doing that at all costs. If you need to turn around to look at your slideshow, you'll turn around, look at your slides, and then you're gonna turn back to face your audience to talk to them. So it's really important that you never turn your back on your audience. Also, number two, do not read your aid. We can read them. You're just using the aid as a guide for your audience to follow along, and it also helps you to follow along, but avoid reading your aid. Let's say at the very beginning of your speech on your first slide, you have a quote. Do your best to memorize that quote, turn to face your audience, and deliver it with full eye contact. If you need to read parts of it, then you would glance at your slide and then you glance back at your audience and deliver that quote with full eye contact. Practice the timing of your, of your slides if you're using a PowerPoint, which you have to for the informative speech, but if in another situation or scenario you are using a prop, you want to make sure that you absolutely practice with your presentation aid because they do slow you down and things might happen that you were not anticipating or that you did not expect and it could throw you off. So that's why it's really important that you practice with your visual aid. And then be aware of the handout. So if you have a handout that you want to give your audience, it's very tempting to pass the handout so that they can follow along. Now, there are some reasons why you would wanna do that because they actually do need to follow along. And if that is the case, my recommendation would be to pass them out ahead of time, to tell them not to turn them over until you have said so, so that you can keep them all on track. Do not pass a handout to your audience if it is not necessary at that point in time. So it's really important that you get your audience to focus on your message and that they're not reading and then tuning you out. So it's really important how you 
present the handout to your audience and how you get them to engage with the handout, but also focus on your message. So that's really important. You as a speaker have to take control there with the handout. So beware of the handout, they can get tricky. And what to do if your aid cannot be seen. So let's just say that your technology fails and the video is not working that you wanted to show. Do not freak out because this is life, it happens. Totally just stay calm. Explain the situation to your audience in a real calm way, this happens. If you had a video, going back to the problem solution, the problem of campus parking, and you wanted to show that video and it's not working, don't freak. And instead of freaking, what you'll do is just say, okay, in this video, this is what happened. And you just, you just describe what, ha what occurred in the video. That's all you have to do. So explain the situation and describe the, describe the aid to your audience. We're all human, things happen. Presentation software. So there's three main types of presentation software. There's PowerPoint, which you are required to use for your informative speech. I know I've said that again and again and again, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. And there's Keynote, and I believe Keynote is for our Mac users. And then there's Prezi, which you're able to download online. So you could also use Prezi or Keynote in place of PowerPoint. So that, that is an option available to all of you. Some tips for using slides. So for text, for general aid guidelines, you just wanna think about the text, that it's appropriate, that your audience can see it, that they can read it. Typically a sans serif text is best for, for PowerPoint slides. It's the easiest for your audience to read. Number two, objects. So you wanna think about any copyright issues. If you are getting an image from the internet, make sure that you have permission to do so. And also, if you have a video that you want to embed, make sure that you've embedded it correctly and then always do a trial run. So transitions between slides and transitions between even main points and sub points within a specific slide is always specific to the software that you're using. You do not need to use transitions, but if you absolutely want to, you may. It will take you more time to incorporate transitions into your slides, and if you want to, you may, but at this level, you do not have to, but if you want to, you may. And then links. Whenever you are including a hyperlink, you wanna make sure that it actually works. So if you want to include a hyperlink in one of your slides, make sure that when you insert it into the slide that you've copied the link and that you've written out the text. So let's say you might copy that link from FSU, the, the parking debacle on campus, and then you might type in the title parking debacle at FSU campus, something like that. So make sure that you do double check that hyperlink to see that it works. So when creating a slide, and I'm gonna show you an example, so you can see what the slides should look like by looking at my PowerPoint presentation. You're watching this video, so you've learned a thing or two there. But when you're creating the slide, what you wanna keep in mind is that for each slide, you want to include a title or some short phrase. And what that does is it helps to trigger your audience's memory because you previewed your main ideas and now you're triggering their memory. Oh yes, this is what we're supposed to be talking about now. That increases the chances that your audience will remember. And then two, it helps them to stay organized with you and follow along more easily. So you should always have a title for each slide that you use or a short phrase. Such as you can have a preview for preview slide, main point one. So you wouldn't write out main point one. You would just write out whatever the title is for that particular slide. So whatever main point one is, that should be included in the title of your slide, main point two, et cetera, et cetera. And then you would have a review slide and that would be the review of each specific main point. You might have a concluding slide to really summarize things or to end very succinctly, so then you would have a concluding slide. Now, the caveat to that is, if you wanted to get creative, going back to the transition, if you wanted to get creative, you could have your main ideas, and then in between, you might have a transitional slide. You might ask a question, or you might, depending upon the content of your speech, you might show a funny image. And I will give you an example. My, my mentor at Syracuse University 
he would deliver his lectures to over 400 students in a lecture auditorium, maybe not totally 400, but around 350. And when he was talking about the Greeks and the fifth century, fourth and fifth century rhetoric, sometimes it can get dry for students to listen to. So as he's going through the centuries and he's talking about the different canons of rhetoric, he would have this ugly dog. And it was a really ugly dog. And that ugly dog would be a bit of a comic relief. And that ugly dog would help to signify that we are moving on to a new point, a different main idea. And he didn't use the dog always, but he used the ugly dog sometimes. So that is a way that you can help to transition from one main idea to another and to also make things a little bit fun if you wanted to. And if that's just not your style, you might choose to have a quote between each slide as a transition slide. If you do use transition slides, you will have a few more than what I've recommended. So for an eight to 10, 10 minute speech, I recommend that you have approximately eight to 10 slides, give or take one or two. If you have transitional slides, you might have about 13 slides. So that's just some food for thought. Also, make sure that in each slide you create a bulleted list, no more than seven lines. And this bulleted list describes the main idea or the theme that you're discussing in that particular slide. Include an object, which could be a photo, an illustration, a chart, or a graph. Again, you're, you're exciting multiple senses. You're engaging left brain and right brain. Left brain by including the text, the verbal part of it, and then right brain by incorporating the visual part of it. And then any potential text that really elaborates your main point. So you might not have a bulleted list and you might just have a couple of sentences that really explain that particular main idea that you're talking about coupled with a visual image or not. You don't always have to have a visual image. This is just an example of a slide. So gorillas are herbivores. They eat things like fruits leaves and shoots. So this is just an example here. You're talking about, let's say your informative speech was about gorillas. And in one particular main idea, your, let's say your first main idea is about diet of gorillas. And it's just really simple. So you just have here a couple of sentences and then you have some visual images. So then that helps your audience to remember what the diet is because you have written it here in text and you also have visual pictures, visual images of what gorillas eat. And then this is just another example. If you are preparing for an event, and let's say you are a business, a business professional and you want to get your colleagues all prepared for the next big event and you want them to remember exactly what they must do in linear fashion, this would be an example of a slide to help your audience prepare for their event. So really, really simple. So here you have the title here. This would be an example of like your bulleted points and then you have the visual image. When you are using slides, when you're speaking while using slides, what you may want to do is include slide cues in your note cards. So you could just write down in your note cards, slide one, slide two, slide three, so that you remember where you should be in space and time with your slideshow. Remember not to read your slides. Time yourself, practice with your PowerPoint presentation, and then prepare for equipment failure. Now, the caveat to that is, in real life, you have to prepare for equipment failure. In this class, there can be no failure, so you must present your informative speech with PowerPoint. So, in real life, prepare for equipment failure, Murphy's Law, if something can go wrong, it will go wrong, so prepare for that, but in this class, you are required to incorporate PowerPoint. if the system does fail you. So in case of software equipment failure, this is what you can do. Always have a backup, no matter what. Have handouts, alternative versions, PDFs. Just ver be prepared to verbally describe what you were talking about. One of my very good friends, she is a project manager for Blue Cross Blue Shield, and she is a statistician by, by college degree, by trade, and her partner, she was in Texas and they had to give a presentation and her partner was really at that time the lead project manager and she has subsequently become lead project manager but at that time 
her manager was supposed to deliver the presentation to their potential clients. And the manager fell sick, fell sick. And then my friend, Abby, had to then deliver the presentation that she had not practiced for. So that's tricky. But she knew her subject well enough so that she could verbally describe what she was talking about. So although this isn't an exact example of a system failure, you still have to know your subject well enough so that if the system does fail, you can still describe everything in great detail because you know your subject that well. So we covered a lot in this presentation. We talked about the function of presentation aids, the different varieties of presentation aids that you can use in a, a speech, presentation guidelines to follow, some tips for presenting your aids, tips for actually using and designing your slides, and then what do you do if technology fails you? So we covered a lot in this lecture, and you wanna remember here, and remember that people remember 10% of what they hear, people remember about 20% of what they read, people will remember about 80% of what they see, and visual data is processed 60,000 times faster than textual data by your brain. So remember that when you're using a visual aid, you are increasing the opportunity for one, your audience to understand, for two, your audience to remember and retain the message.